Hey guys, um, I just wanted to do a little video. Last night I posted a picture of a guitar which um, has created quite a lot of interest. Um, I've had a few messages asking about it, you know, how old is it, etc. Um, so I thought I'd do a little video and talk through the guitar in a little bit of detail for all those people out there that are interested. Um, if you're not a guitar-y kind of person then, and you want to hear what the sound it, it sounds like, then I suggest you look at um, DHTV number two, where um, I play uh, the guitar on a, an old Fleetwood Mac song. Um, but anyway, without further ado, I'll uh, go through the guitar. I'm filming this in my office, by the way, so, which also doubles as a storeroom. Um, so let me just flip this camera around. Okay, here she is. So people are saying, um, is it 1950s, is it 60s? Um, it's actually approximately 1970. Um, as you can see, it's had a, a fair few knocks and everything. And the reason that we think it's a 70 is it has this, what they call here, a neck volute. Um, and you can see the, the neck is actually made out of three pieces of mahogany. It's a serial number there, look. Um, but interestingly, it doesn't have a three piece body, which I believe a lot of guitars that era did so that puts it at approximately 1970 maybe even late 69 but who knows um, see it's got a little bit of a uh, buckle wear there and these pickups would not have been original I believe it would have had mini humbuckers or, or even uh, P90 pickups originally um, um, these ones are Gibson burst buckers, I believe, at the moment. But when I got it, it did have some original early 1960s pickups and um, humbuckers in it. Which I still have. And I'll probably put back in at some point. So, I'll just swap the camera back around a bit. So the guitar's got quite an interesting history. Um, if you bear with me, I'll, I'll tell you it. Um, so I, when I was about 16 years old, I had a, uh, a nursery teacher who, who I'd known for a lot of years, and she was um, she was married to a guy who played in a band that performed um, covers by the band Free, um, Paul Kossoff and um, they were playing at a local pub here uh, where I live in Leeds and um, I went down to watch them perform and it was the first time I'd seen a Gibson guitar live and it was this particular guitar and um, you know the guy who owned it ended up being quite a close friend and um, you know over the years he worked in a guitar store I would see him quite regularly and he would always say, no man, I'm never selling that, it's the best, the best Les Paul I've ever played. Um, and apparently he, he'd had that since maybe 1973. Um, anyway, cut to about six years ago, maybe longer now, and um, I just went into his store on the off chance, and you just, you know, as you do on a Saturday afternoon, you go and look at some guitars and stuff. And he maybe run into some hard times or whatever but he said hey do you still want to buy that Les Paul gold top and I was I would love to do um, and so we we did a deal and and the guitar became mine and became my number one Gibson at the time um, and by far the most resonant and bright and light sounding guitar uh, wonderful Les Paul guitar Anyway, I had this all all the way through uh, the Dunwells. I think I had this on tour in the States um, 
for this summer tour of 2012. It very nearly got used on the Leno show. Um, at the end, I decided to use one with Bigsby, but um, this was on the road with me at that time. I think we played at, at the E Town Hall in the border, Colorado. There's some, some nice videos of us performing there, um, and um, I used it on that. Um, and yeah, and cut to two years ago when I got back off tour with the Dunwells and. I was pretty hard up for cash at the time and um, decided to sell a few guitars and quite stupidly this one decided to, I decided in a moment of madness to uh, to let it go so I rang the guy up who'd owned the guitar since the 70s and said hey you know I promised if I ever saw this I'd sell it back to you um, do you want to buy it and obviously he said yes um, so I sold it back to him and thought I'd never see it again and um, yeah, and then maybe about six or eight months ago, out of the blue, he called me up and he says, hey, you know that old old Gibson guitar that I, I sold to you and you sold back? I don't suppose you want to buy it again. Um, and um, I snapped his hand off. Now, luckily, uh, at the time, um, my grandmother had uh, given me some money um, for Christmas, which I hadn't spent. And um, so I had the cash available to, in order to... Uh, to buy back the guitar, um, you know, sadly my, my grandmother actually passed away very recently, so it has even more poignancy now that she was able to to allow me to, to buy back this uh, this beautiful instrument. So um, I don't use it much live now, because I'm more into the sound of the, the Fenders um, and the tail of T5 um, for the stuff that I'm doing with the, the, uh, the Dave Hansen um, band. Um, but I still love this to bits, and I definitely won't be letting it go again. Um, so yeah, that's the story behind the uh, 1970 Les Paul Gold Top, um, and I will post some more, some more videos on the DHTV. Um, so if you um, if you want to see those, um, using this and a couple of the other vintage guitars I've got, then uh, please subscribe here. Cheers.